Barbie Killers is a true crime book written by Peter Vronsky, focusing on the case of Paul Bernardo and Carla Hamolka, a couple that engaged in very sick behavior. Peter Vronsky is an author, filmmaker, and forensic investigative historian. He holds a PhD from the University of Toronto in the history of espionage in international relations and criminal justice. I am Teresa and welcome to the Canvas and Crime Chronicles. In December 1990, Tammy Homolka died after being drugged and raped by her own sister Carla and her sister's boyfriend, Paul Bernardo. This murderous couple would go on to kill at least two more girls that we know of. In the 1990s, the Ken and Barbie Killers, a blonde and attract attractive murderous married couple named Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka, had raped and killed three young girls between 1990 and 1992, including Carla's teenage sister, Tammy Homolka. Tammy was born on January 1st, 1975. She had a perfectly normal childhood. She grew up in the neighborhood of Port Credit, Ontario, Canada, to a Czech father and a Canadian mother. She had two older sisters, Carla and Lori. She was known for her athletic abilities and she participated in a variety of sports including track and field, cross country running, and soccer, with soccer being her favorite. She was a grade 10 student at Sir Winston Churchill Secondary School in St. Catharines at the time of her death. By the time Tammy was 15, Tammy's eldest sister Carla had started going out with a man named Paul Bernardo. The two had what appeared to be a magnetic kind of attraction, but their relationship was not a fairy tale. Bernardo seemed quite charming, but he was known to the police as the Scarborough Rapist. Between 1987 and 1988, for 13 months, it is believed he attacked 11 women across Scarborough. But as his relationship with Carla intensified, Bernardo's eye turned to her sister Tammy. He allegedly complained that Carla hadn't been a virgin when she met him. Carla would often pretend to be Tammy and say she was 15 just to please Paul. Before long, this fantasy wasn't enough for Bernardo. Tammy was the first victim in their crime spree. In December 1990, Bernardo demanded to have Carla's 15-year-old sister as a gift. The two drugged her, raped her, and covered up her death when she choked on her own vomit. This is what happened. On Christmas Eve 1990, shortly before what would have been Tammy's 16th birthday on New Year's Day, January 1st, 1991, Carla and Bernardo served Tammy alcoholic drinks laced with a sedative. 
When Tammy passed out, Bernardo raped her while recording the assault with his video camera. Carla then placed a cloth soaked with halothane, an anesthetic she had stolen from the animal hospital where she worked, over her sister's mouth. And when Bernardo demanded that Carla have sex with her sister, she did. They filmed the entire rape, taking turns holding the camera while using the halothane to keep Tammy unconscious. Tammy became sick while sedated and died after choking on her vomit. After the attempts to revive her failed, Carla covered up the evidence of the assault and called an ambulance. of death was listed as choking to death on her own vomit and it was believed at the time to have been an accident. Doctors blamed Tammy's death to an accident stemming from alcohol poisoning and Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka were free to kill again. Years later after the killers were arrested for the murders of Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French, Tammy Homolka's body would be exhumed. After killing Tammy, Paul Bernardo and Carla laid low for about six months. But in June 1991, they abducted their second victim, a 14-year-old girl named Leslie Mahaffey. Bernardo kidnapped the girl, brought her home, and raped her for hours as Carla watched. One of them, either Carla or Bernardo, later accused the other at the trial, choked Mahaffey to death. Then the couple chopped her up and buried her in cement and tossed her body in Lake Gibson. Mahaffey's remains were discovered just a few days later on June 29th the same day, oddly, that Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka got married. Photos of the happy couple on their wedding day offer no clues about the horrific activities. On April 16, 1992, Carla then lured a 15-year-old girl, Kristen French, toward her car under the guise of needing directions, and Bernardo grabbed the girl from behind. They took her home and raped her, beat her, and killed her too. Despite that Ken and Barbie killers killed three victims, Paul Bernardo had given Carla many, many other reasons to leave him. He killed her sister Tammy, he abused her, and he made her into a murderer. Carla finally left him in January 1993 when her husband beat her so badly that she had to move in with relatives.
later testified that her fiance decided that he wanted to have sex with Tammy and he decided the only way he could have sex with her was to drug her. At the trial, Carla claimed that she was totally against the idea but agreed to let Paul have sex with Tammy after he wore her down with threats and violence. Though some have reported that Carla gave Tammy to Bernardo as a gift, Carla has insisted that it was all Paul's idea. She testified that he chose December 23, 1990 as the day of the attack. He said, this is the day I want to do this. It'll be a great Christmas present for me, Carla said, according to the UPI. She cried and begged him not to do it, and he said, nope, we're doing it, and that was it. Carla later testified that she was totally devastated and blamed herself for not being strong enough to tell him no. Carla testified that Bernardo was mentally and physically abusive and that Bernardo's abuse of her had gotten worse and that he even made her sleep on the floor. Carla told the police everything and she admitted her part to the murders but said that Bernardo had made her help him. Carla claimed that if she didn't turn the water tap off completely, he'd hit her. If she didn't say the right thing, he'd hit her. He'd hold knives to her throat and he told her he, she better watch her back. He said, always watch your back with me. Carla claims Paul was physically and verbally abusive to her. Paul Bernardo was sentenced to life in prison. On February 26, 1993, the defense lawyer and the Crown began negotiations on a 10-year sentence for Carla in exchange for her testimony and dis full disclosure of all the crimes. At the time of the negotiations, the role she and Bernardo had played in Tammy's death was not known. When she was admitted for psychiatric assessment in March 1993, Carla confessed in a letter to her parents about her involvement in Tammy's death. When the plea agreement was finalized, the initial 10-year sentence was still intact and two years was added for Tammy's death. Carla was officially sentenced to 12 years on July 6, 1993 due to her cooperation in the case against Paul. In 2005, she left prison after serving her sentence and according to Investigation Discovery, is now married with three children. On July 20th, 1993, Tammy's body was exhumed. Inside her casket was a wedding invitation for Carla and Bernardo's wedding, as well as some other notes. Other members of the Mahomolka family asked that the items be removed before Tammy's reinterment. She is now interred at Victoria Lawn Cemetery in St. Catharines, Ontario. Tammy's parents have said little to the press about how one of their daughters killed the other, and their third daughter, Lori, later changed her name. But in 2005, after Carla Homolka's release, her father did suggest that he wouldn't be waiting outside of prison to greet her. Thank you for listening to another episode of Canvas and Crime. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button. And if there's a story you would like me to look into and recap, drop it in the comments. I avoid over-sensationalized serial killers and the over -po overly popular stories, but feel free to offer suggestions. Thanks, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you next time.